Hey everyone, I'm Mark Robowski, the architect of this cyber law course. And today we're diving into the fascinating world of internet regulations and how they come to be. You might wonder, can the internet really be regulated? The answer is yes, and it's already happening in many ways. These regulations come in the form of constitutions, treaties, statutes, rules, and court rulings. Nations and international organizations create these laws to tackle issues like privacy, speech, and fraud. But there's more to it than just laws. Online behavior is also influenced by other factors. Harvard Law professor Lawrence Lessig, in his influential book, Code and Other Laws of Cyberspace, explains that there are three additional forces regulating the internet. First is architecture. This is the technical framework of the internet. Think of it like the digital skeleton of cyberspace. It dictates how data is transmitted and what users can do. This includes filtering software, passwords, encryption programs, and the internet transmission protocols. The architecture itself can restrict what we can do and access online, making it a crucial form of regulation. Second is norms. These are unwritten rules of the internet the morals and ethics of the online community. Second is norms. These are the unwritten rules of the internet, the morals and ethics of the online community. For example, posting racial slurs on social media might not be illegal in the United States, but it can lead to social backlash, content moderation, and even getting fired from a job or expelled from school. Norms shape our online behavior just as much as laws do. The third kind of regulation is market regulation. This is the good old supply and demand principle. If a product or service isn't popular, it won't last. Companies must innovate and self-regulate to stay competitive. This economic force helps prevent predatory practices and encourages innovation. But remember, the application of these forces varies across the globe. Some countries have controlled economies, which limits consumers' market choices. Some countries have limited internet infrastructure, which may limit their citizens' access to the internet and its applications. And each country has different laws and cultures. For example, some countries have strict censorship laws, while others champion freedom of expression. Since the internet transcends borders, national laws don't apply globally, and cultural norms can differ dramatically. Since there are more than 180 countries, and this course is being taught at an American university, we're going to focus on cyber regulations in the United States. In the United States, cyber law is not a distinct area of law, but rather a mix of intellectual property law, contract law, privacy laws, and other areas of law and how they relate to cyberspace. In other words, it's like a legal cocktail. Laws in the United States come from five main sources, constitutional, statutory, administrative, executive, and judicial. Here's a quick breakdown. First is constitutional law. This comes from the United States Constitution and its amendments. For example, the First Amendment protects free speech both online and offline, while the Fourth Amendment protects against unreasonable searches, impacting digital privacy. Second is statutory law. This is made by elected government bodies, like Congress and state legislatures. Examples include the Digital Millennium Copyright Act for copyright infringement, and the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act for protecting children's privacy online. The third source of law is administrative law. These are rules and regulations made by government agencies. For example, the Federal Communications Commission oversees internet service providers, and enforces network neutrality. Meanwhile, the Federal Trade Commission regulates online advertising and protects consumers from fraud. The fourth source of law is executive actions. Actions by the president and other executives can indirectly affect internet law through appointments and policy setting. For instance, the president gets to appoint commissioners to the Federal Communications Commission, and they get to set policies on issues such as network neutrality. Fifth, and finally, there are judicial rulings. Courts play a significant role by resolving cases involving constitutional challenges and legal disputes, setting precedents for lower courts. A notable example is the 1997 case 
Reno versus American Civil Liberties Union, where the Supreme Court ruled that certain provisions of the Communications Decency Act that sought to censor internet content violated the First Amendment. Cyber law is not limited to the federal government. Even local governments and courts can play a role in deciding issues. Disputes involving cyber law can be litigated in both civil and criminal cases at all levels of government. Federal and state laws address cyber crimes like hacking and identity theft, while local governments regulate internet infrastructure, like the placement of cell towers. However, you should be aware that creating new internet-related laws in the United States is challenging for several reasons. One reason is the rapid technological evolution. Technology advances quickly, often outpacing existing laws and leaving outdated regulations in place. Another reason is political polarization. This makes it tough for lawmakers to pass new laws consistently as control of Congress and the presidency frequently changes hands. Another obstacle is the lack of technological expertise. Many lawmakers and even Supreme Court justices lack the knowledge needed to craft effective internet laws. Public ignorance about government functions also exacerbates these challenges. Many Americans are unfamiliar with basic civics, which can lead to unchecked government power and rights violations. That's why it's critical to become informed through courses like our cyber law course so that you can empower yourself to understand and defend your rights. Thanks for joining me on this exploration of how internet regulations are made. Stay informed, stay engaged, and let's navigate the digital world together.